Hello everyone. Welcome to Engineered Learnings. Engineered Learnings has been created as an effort to help and reach out to all the engineering students, aspirants and professionals out there with the basic understanding and the crux of the topics important for placements, vivas, semesters, competitive examinations and all types of interviews. So let's go to today's topic. Welcome everyone. So today we are going to talk, discuss about a topic very important for placements. There is POM selection. You are often asked how and what are the conditions uh, for the selection of a POM in an industry. So you need to understand two basic uh, points. Uh, first of all, let us draw the curve. The relationship between head developed by a pump, head of a pump, And Q, that is the flow rate of the fluid that is being transferred by the pump, has a relation like this. These are different pump characteristics. Depends on the RPM of the pump. For different pumps, pump 1, pump 2, pump 3. These are the three head versus Q curve. What does how does this relationship come from? These are called the characteristic curves. What does this signify for? It is the head developed by a pump. That is the when it discharges, the discharge head developed by the pump is given by delta H and how it varies at different flow rates, how that head of the pump varies. So this is the characteristic curve and it has a relation of also known as the performance curve, performance curve has a relation of delta H is equals to A minus B Q square. These two parameters vary from pump to pump. For pump 1 it may be A1, B1, for pump 2 A2, B2, for pump 3 A3, B3. But the nature will be Q square dependent negative in a negative manner that is with the increase of Q H will decrease from in a characteristic curve. Now let's come to a let's, let's rub this for a moment and let's come to a approach an energy balance equation. The energy balance equation for any pump supposedly this is my pump this is my source fluid, this is the pressure P1, this is the discharge fluid, this is the pressure P2 with velocity head V2, velocity V1, the pump having an efficiency of eta and a work horsepower of WP. So what happens is, if you see that this pump to this, this is at height Z2 and this is at height Z1. So the Bernoulli or energy balance rather, we can write that eta WP taken as the head that is in meters or feet as the head is equals to P1 minus P2 or P2 minus P1 rather the discharge pressure minus the suction pressure this is the suction line and this is the discharge line by rho g plus P2 square minus V1 square by 2g plus Z2 minus Z1 plus HF, but HF is the frictional head loss. So this is the equation. So you can see that 
this is v2 square and v2 we know by explanation it is the velocity it is nothing but volumetric flow rate multiplied by area rather volumetric flow rate divided by the area so the volumetric flow rate it depends on the square of the volumetric flow rate it takes the same form as the square of the volumetric flow rate moreover hf also has an expression of f del by d v square by 2 this is the operating velocity the greater of the two velocities and it is also dependent on q so you see there is an overall dependency of a plus b q square this delta h this can be also represented as delta h the head developed by the pump so operating conditions normal energy balance equation you see the operating conditions give a shape where this is directly proportional to q square thus now if we refer to the curve now if we refer to the curve we will find something like this the operating line this is the operating line and it's all the same for any pump irrespective of the pump number the operating line does not change what changes is the characteristic curve this is for one pump this is for the third, second this is for the third another thing that is there is the efficiency curve it's something like this so if we now if we now see this this is the efficiency curve and this is the maximum efficiency that is if we take this as delta h take this as q and take this axis as the, my efficiency axis this is my eta max or maximum efficiency and if we drop this this is my best efficiency point for pump 3 this is my best efficiency point for pump 2 and this is my best efficiency point for pump 1 so you see these are my BEPs these three points are my BEPs this, because this is the maximum efficiency if we drop them to the characteristic curve we would see these are the maximum efficiency points so these are the operating points these are the flow rate at which it attains a maximum efficiency so we see that the operating curve is the closest to this point that is for the second part the operating curve is cutting a point wherein it is closer to the q optimum the q that should have been there for obtaining a maximum efficiency the best efficiency it is closer to that point so we would select this pump two pump two and disregard pump one and pump three because if we select pump one you see this is turning out to be my operating point far distant from my b the best operating best efficiency point if we select this this turns out to be my operating point this is far different from my BEP so my efficiency drops if this is my operating point this is my efficiency so my efficiency drops if this is my operating point this is my efficiency efficiency drops now you see if this is my operating point if this is my operating point this is my efficiency very close to the maximum efficiency very close to my best efficiency point so my pump 2 is going to be the pump that I would select so you need to find the, the, the cutting of the head characteristic curve and the head operating curve. One being A minus BQ square, another being C plus BQ square. Operating curve is this. We get from the equation of energy balance and this is from head characteristic curve. Characteristic. And the best efficiency point is going to be selected. So we are going to select pump 2 here and this is how the selection is done referring to the efficiency now once we get the operating q then we can always we can always replace that in the equation of eta wp is equals to delta p by rho delta p being p2 minus p1 plus 
v2 squared minus v1 squared by 2g plus z2 minus z1 plus fl by d vp squared by 2 plus ac vp squared by 2. This is for form friction. This is q squared dependent. Also, this is q squared dependent. So this. Once we know the q, we will know this. We know this. All the other parameters we know. We only were searching for the operating uh, flow rate condition. Once we get the operating flow rate condition, we will accordingly adjust ourselves. Uh, because we know at this point the velocity will be zero. So v1 will be zero. V2 will be my operating velocity, and that will be equal to q by a whole square. So once we know the operating uh, flow rate. We are going to find out, find out eta wp as the feet. So once we get that, we find the work in terms of force power by directly multiplying this entire thing, supposedly a. Once we get it as an example, into g, because g has to be multiplied to get the work, not in terms of head, but in terms of energy, by eta. That is my efficiency. That is my efficiency corresponding to my operating flow rate. So that is going to be my pump selection process. Now you have to see and observe the units of WP and eta and this thing correctly. And to balance, we have taken it as head. You can also take it in terms of pressure energy. So that's it uh, for pump selection. This is all you need to know. And uh, if you like our work, like it. Give it a thumbs up, uh, share it, comment on our work and help us reach a greater audience. Thank you.